Right, that's the board cleared. <coughs> so to start again, to find the inverse of this matrix using elementary row operations. So the technique would be, I'll take this matrix and I'll take the identity element, the identity matrix, and I'll perform elementary row operations on them both until this one turns into the identity element and then this one will have had turned into its inverse. But instead of doing them side by side, I could run them together. You could bolt one matrix onto the other one. They're still separate from each other, but you could bolt them together. Ooh, into an augmented matrix, just so you can run through the same operations. So the first step would be get both of these down to zeros. Well, in order to do that, I'd want row 2 take away 3 lots of row 1, and row 3 take away just row 1. So that would give me, leave the first row alone. So that's just going to stay the way it is. <coughs> so this would be the 3 take away 3, that's going to be 0. 1 take away 2, that's going to be so we take away 3, that'll be negative 2. 2 take away 6, that'll be negative 4. 1 take away 3, that'll be negative 3. And then that'll stay as 1, and that'll stay as 0. This one. Row 3 take away row 1. 1 take away 1 0. 2 take away 1 is 1. 1 take away 2 is negative 1. 0 take away 1 would be negative 1. That's just nothing, and 1 take away 1 is 0. But so far, so good. Second bit, I'd rather tidy this up. Get this down to 0, 1, 2. Keep the numbers nice and small and easily manageable. So I'll leave that alone. And I'll leave that alone. But I'll multiply <coughs> row 2 by negative a half. Negative a half, row 2. So that'll be divided from by negative 2. So I'll go to 1, 2. But that unfortunately now is going to become a fraction. 3 upon 2, that's going to become a fraction of half. That's going to stay at 0. Right, proceed after that. Next step, I've got that. Get this one down to 0. Right, so to get that to 0, I'm going to take my row 3 and subtract row 2. So that means I leave the top row alone. And leave the second row alone. And for this one, it's going to be row 3, take away row 2, nothing, take away nothing. 1, take away 1. Negative 1, take away 2 is negative 3. Now we start to hit fractions. So it's negative 2 halves, take away 3 halves is negative 5 halves. Nothing, take away negative half is a half. And then 1 take away 0 is still just 1. Next part is going to be, again trying to get 1s when possible, multiply this row by negative a third. Divide this by negative 3. That will get me to 1. That's the bottom row that I actually want. So leave them alone. 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 2. 3 upon 2. Don't like it. A half. Not too happy. 0, 0. Now divide by negative 3. So that's going to become 1. This is going to become worse now, because this is going to become negative, that's going to become 5 sixths, that's going to become negative, <coughs> a third of a half is negative 1 sixth, and that's going to become negative a third. Right, you can see the nature of the beast here, sixths have creeped into, have crept into it. Right, the fractions that begin to proliferate, that's going to really make this arithmetic clumsy. So the same as any other expression or equation when you've got fractions in it, let's get them out of there. So the next step would be this. Before I proceed with the elementary row operations, I'm going to tidy up this half. I don't need to tidy up this half because they're still separate matrices. They've just been bolted together so the same operations can run through them. I can take this half independently. So I'll leave the first one alone. 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1. But for the second half, I'll multiply the whole lot by a sixth. And I'll take out all these sixths, get the fractions right out of it so they can't do any more harm. So that means this would turn into everything would have to become 6 times bigger. So that means it would be 6, 0, 0. It would be 9, what took about doing, negative 3, 0. And it's easier. That's going to be 5, minus 1, minus 2. Then you can carry on from there. That's the fractions out of the way. So the next step is going to be get these two 2's down to zeros. So that would be, I want row 3, take away, sorry, row 1, take away 2 lots of row 3, and row 2, take away 2 lots of row 3. I'll have to keep a memory of this sixth. I'll just put this conveniently here in the middle just to remember this is a sixth of it over here. So that means the first part would become this, take away 2 lots of the bottom. So that stays as 1, that stays as 1, that goes to 0. 6 take away 10, that'll be... Uh, negative 4, nothing, take away 
Take away that, so I'll be a positive 2. Nothing, take away a negative again, so I'll be a positive 4. Next row, same again, take away 2 lots to the bottom. Nothing, take away nothing. 1, take away nothing. That'll go down to 0. 9, take away 10, that's negative 1. Negative 3, but plus 2, so I'll be negative 1. And 0, but plus 4, so I'll be 4. And then leaving the bottom alone. 0, 0, 1, 5, negative 1, negative 2. Almost there. Only this one to get rid of. So the last stage would be this. I remember my sixth in there because it's a sixth of this one. So the last stage would be row one minus row two. So that means row two and three are going to stay the same, but I'll just do this one first. So I've got one take away nothing is still one. One take away one is nothing. Nothing take away nothing is nothing. Negative four take away negative one will go to negative three. 2 take away negative 1 go to positive 3, 4 take away 4 go to 0, and the rest stay the same. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 0, 0, 1, 5, negative 1, negative 2. Meaning that the inverse of matrix A should hopefully be this. It should be 1 sixth of negative 3, 3, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2. Now, last thing that remains then is just to check if that's correct. Right, cleared the board, sorted that. A, now to check if that is in fact the inverse. If it is the inverse, then inverse of A times A should equal I. <coughs> well, does it, does it happen? So, 1 sixth of negative 3, negative 1, 5, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 4, negative 2, times 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, should equal 1 sixth of, now, matrix multiplication, along the rows down the columns, negative 3 plus 9, and nothing, is 6. Negative 3 plus 3, and nothing, is nothing. Negative 6 plus 6, and nothing, is nothing. So far, so good. Negative 1, and negative 3 and 4 is nothing. Negative 1 and negative 1 and 8 is 6. Negative 2 and negative 2 and 4 is nothing. 5, take away 3, take away 2 is nothing. 5, take away 1, take away 4 is nothing. 10, take away 2, take away 2 is 6. Divide them all by 6, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's it. <coughs> Showing that that is in fact the inverse arrived at by using those elementary row operations of succession. Awkward thing when you get fractions. thing to do there is, as soon as the fractions start to manifest themselves, take them out. You don't need to alter the other matrix. Take them out to keep the arithmetic simple. Now, this is one technique. Another technique is to use... The, a joint matrix is used the determinant and an altered matrix where you rearrange these terms replacing them by their signed minors. So I'll do that in the next video as a comparison of which might be faster for a 3x3.